All right, so we're going to talk about uh, Homo erectus, uh, the next in our, our uh, genus line. <clears throat> so Homo erectus first appeared on the scene somewhere around 1.8 million years ago um, when they ended um, is a source of some debate. Um, the question has to do with um, you know, the transition from Homo erectus into archaic Homo sapiens, etc. So Homo erectus may go uh, as up to maybe 200,000 years ago, it might go to like 500,000, maybe even 800,000 years ago. Regardless, it is our longest lived ancestor for at, at minimum of 1 million years ago. So Homo erectus first appeared in Africa, um, but it is the first of our ancestors to leave Africa. There's evidence of Homo erectus into the um, Arabian Peninsula right next door uh, to maybe 1.7 or 1.6 million years ago. So it was the first of our ancestors to leave. It spread all throughout Asia um, and uh, even got into uh, Europe. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so here is... Uh, the Asian variant, one of the most famous examples of uh, Homo erectus. You can see the size difference between Homo erectus on your left and Homo habilis on your right. So there is a big difference in overall size of the skull. There is a big difference in brain size uh, as well. <coughs> Some of the main anatomical characteristics to be able to tell uh, Homo erectus uh, versus other kinds of um, hominids. Uh, for one, uh, Homo erectus has the biggest brow ridges of any of our hominid ancestors. They're really uh, quite huge. And this is especially true of the Asian variant of Homo erectus. So uh, another characteristic is this thing called a sagittal keel. So previously I had talked about a sagittal crest, which is the extra bone along the sagittal line. This doesn't have extra muscle attachment locations, but instead on the sagittal line, it has just sort of a, a um, ridge of bone. And so it's called a keel, like the bottom part of a boat where it kind of comes down to like a rounded point. So uh, Homo erectus, especially the Asian variant of Homo erectus has a sagittal keel. Homo habilis does not. And none of the ancestors afterwards, including modern humans, has a sagittal keel. It may be most visible uh, looking at it from the back. Okay. So I'm going to skip to uh, point four. You've heard me already say a few times the Asian variant, right? So one of the, because Homo erectus was the first to leave Africa, um, there is debate again about lumping versus splitting, which I had talked about with Homo erectus, with, or sorry, with Homo habilis. Um, and with Homo erectus, this is uh, the case as well. And so there is debate about if the Asian variant is different enough than, for example, the African variant. The African variant doesn't have the dramatic brow ridges that the Asian variants do. It doesn't have the sagittal keels, etc. And so there is um, debate in the anthropological and just sort of larger scientific community about whether or not we call uh, all of these 
the African, the European, the Asian Homo erectus all by Homo erectus, or do we call them uh, separate species names? Um, <clears throat> so to the third point, um, Homo, hob, or Homo erectus, excuse me, is the first of our ancestors to be associated with tools that are uh, worked on both sides. Remember when I talked about unifacial tools, that meant that the tool was worked on one side and then uh, split off from the core and that other side wasn't uh, prepared or worked. So um, Homo erectus is the first to uh, make tools where there's prepared on both sides. What this does is when you work a tool on both sides, it means that the cutting edge is actually sharper. So you can um, be more effective in the cutting or perhaps scraping um, that an individual is doing. The uh, tool uh, type that is most synonymous or associated with Homo erectus is a, a tool technology called Acheulean tools. In your PowerPoint slides, you have slides that show a photo of the Acheulean uh, tools. Um, it's named for a location in France, La Acheule. And again, this is a big uh, technological advancement um, from previous um, hominids. Um, last point to bring up. I had emphasized that with the premium, previous hominids that they were all relatively small and that they, um, that they were about chimpanzee size. Um, these uh, with Homo erectus, we now see, relatively speaking, modern body form. There are individuals, for example, this one. Uh, this is a, a young male from Africa, from West Af or sorry, from East Africa, um, that was estimated to be about five feet nine or five feet ten. Um, and had died before um, he was fully mature. So there are, uh, there's estimates of Homo erectus to be as tall as six feet tall. So uh, modern body uh, size um, and also modern body shape. So as you've been reading, I haven't mentioned in these mini lectures because they don't have to do with the skulls, um, in addition to modern body form as far as size, it also has to do with the shape of the limbs. So um, Homo erectus has long legs and short arms where our ancestors before had longer arms compared to the length of the legs. Um, but also as I've previously talked about, these individuals have much bigger brain than previous hominids, as I've already talked about. Uh, but with the increase in body size, the brain size body size ratio didn't change dramatically. What we do see, though, that is a change, um, continues the trend of um, decreasing prognathism and uh, decreasing uh, tooth size.